everybody! Welcome back to Melody Ever After. I'm Melody, and today I'm going to be sharing something with you um, from my childhood. Hopefully, you will like it. When I was a very small child, there was a show on the Thompson Learning Channel um, from when I was like from first grade to eighth grade, and I loved it so much. Now, I know that most everybody has heard of Four Weddings, but I've noticed that online a lot of people are like, what's the show? Drop the show name. Drop the show name in my comment sections. And I'm like, maybe this is a unexplored territory for a lot of people. So for those of you who don't know, Four Weddings was a show where four women who were engaged attend each other's weddings as guests. <laughs> It was this competition where women would compete um, and decide who had the best wedding. This show was pretty much on in every single household where the mom dictated the remote um, at some point during the day. So gather around the coffee table, pour yourself a glass of wine, get cozy, grab a blanket, because we're going to get into the nitty gritty of TLC's Four Weddings here on Melody Ever After. What made this show so absolutely gripping for such a huge amount of women, including myself, and also people who just love reality TV, was pride. All of us were sitting at our couches saying, I could do better than that. As if we all just had $32,000 like shoved in the couch cushions we weren't aware about. First of all, the show synopsis. The show was just like any other competition or game show where it followed the exact same format every single time. There was an introduction of the brides and it was a nightmare to say the least. I believe weddings should stick to the traditional format. They've worked for hundreds and thousands of years. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You can already tell that this woman is going to be the like insufferable manipulative. The wedding's costing the bride and her fiance, Ed, $20,000. The proposal, and I was like, you know what? It's our six month anniversary. I got home. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I have time. Yes, it was. It was eight months. No, it was eight months. Yeah, it was eight months. Leave this man alone. Six months, eight months, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. It's annoying when your partner forgets something that is considered a milestone in your relationship, and it's frustrating, but that's something that once you get in the car, you just chew him out. Um, um. Girl, like, I'm trying. I am trying to stick up for her right now. It's just, they, they know what they're doing to make you hate these brides, and I think that's why it's so gripping i don't like it when women don't wear white wedding dresses you just expect to see someone in white nobody's going to believe that i have a blue wedding gown they know what they're doing they do because she looks horrible she looks awful Based on what all of the brides have said in interviews that being on the show was a really wholesome experience and they really liked dealing with the competitors and it was actually a really good time, they do a good job making me not believe that because they seem so judgmental. Following the introductions of the brides, the brides would reveal about how much their wedding budget was and what the theme was going to be for their wedding. And I'm not talking about like their colors or like what season, this was a Theme! When I say theme, I mean a theme. The poison, the poison for Cusco, the poison chosen specially to kill Cusco, Cusco's poison. A real theme, like, like a costume party or a prom. My theme for a wedding is an old world circus. We're talking 20 to 40s vintage style circus. We're gonna have a piano player, girls handing out food, and fire dancers. Then the brides, who have never met each other before, meet up, attend each other's wedding, score each other based on dress, food, and overall experience and venue. Then they tally up all of the scores and the winner gets a dream honeymoon and the loser is just a loser. And this is when it starts to get really fun because all of those archetypes start to kind of like show through. Um, you've got your, your rich bitchy bride, you've got your bride that's like kind of nerdy and you have all of these brides that are doing something a little bit different with their weddings and they all have different opinions and the same few things tend to happen every single time. 
Without fail, these brides will try to gang up on each other and complain about the most menial thing. They'll say, the chicken's dry. The duck doesn't have a taste, any taste at all. Look at this. I don't it looks like it's not cooked at all. Look. Or they'll say, I couldn't hear the vows. Or well, every time I think I got it, I don't. I thought that they were in the bottom, they were still in the middle of the program, and then when they were in the bottom, I still thought they were at the beginning, and we thought it was, the, it was just, I got lost. Or, I didn't like that the venue was 0.2 miles from a come and go gas station. I just wasn't feeling that. But the fact that he received no ring and there was no kissing, there was really no like children involved that's sort of out of the norm for me so it made me a little uncomfortable the girls will either gang up on the coolest wedding because they are jealous or the bride with the coolest wedding will inevitably lose because she had a bad attitude as i was saying earlier there are some tropes in the show and you have to kind of watch the show to understand but it doesn't take long to just start picking them out there's always the religious one that has this like extremely long religious ceremony that kind of goes on too long or no, it's in a different language or something like that. They always have something to complain about um, for the religious bride. Um, it can also go the other way and the religious bride can also be super judgmental of the non-religious brides and say she needs to take this more seriously. Um, there's the quirky one or the DIY bride as I was talking about and she typically has some kind of fun unique theme or crazy quirky activity or she's made all of her decorations by hand or something of the like. Another trope that happens in the show is the I absolutely cannot eat that, Sarah. Like, I, I can't. You don't understand. I can't eat that. There's always someone who's allergic to gluten, vegetarian, I don't know, whatever, and they always complain about the food. And I will not have it with this because I have a peanut allergy, a legitimate anaphylactic reaction to peanuts and consuming them. And as someone who loves weddings and will tear up a wedding, I just don't eat the cake. I just don't eat the food if I don't trust it. These weddings are expensive and they've got the biggest spreads of food I've ever seen in my life, personally. Cali's Cocktail Hour features Italian, Greek, and seafood dishes. Wow. This crazy looking stuff over here. With calamari, I'll try a few. I'll touch yeah. it. I know they're not complaining about that. There's nothing wrong with that. It looks it looks like normal food. What do you mean? What do you mean? So pretty much we didn't eat at Anna Maria's wedding. I had myself in my purse, fortunately, and we made a quick phone call to an Italian restaurant that I happen to know. really have some kind of special diet a wedding is not the place to be like oh my gosh well this just doesn't fit into my diet it's not your wedding when i see the brides on the show being like i just can't eat that well good thing that you don't have to good thing no one is making you the main reason that the show doesn't really stand the test of time is the trends uh, um at the time period of the weddings it took place in the 2010s, and for those of you who don't know, the, the 2010s had literally awful, literally horrible wedding trends. From the, the strapless, every single dress being strapless, to the mermaid gown, like, not even the modern mermaid gown. The, mer the mermaid gowns today are fine. The very, very mermaid gowns of the 2000s. She she yeah, we were all shocked. And then her husband-to-be ran after her. I don't know if she could do it. You can tell that everyone's favorite movie was The Hunger Games at this point in time, just based on the clip from the strapless dresses and the little flowers and their hair and the colors. We were all like, what is going on? Okay, there's something going on with the cage over there.
<laughs> yeah. She did a dramatic runaway bride exit and then appeared in a shark tank, in a shark cage, and got married as a spectacle, as entertainment for you. S specifically for you, guests of, of Four Weddings. Oh, look at the little shark tooth. Very uh, creative. Oh, that's too cool. It's tooth decor. It was nice that she had the whole aquarium look. But the centerpieces, it's just a little bit of sand, a candle. It would have been cool if she had actual fish in it. That would have been cool. I'm giving Katie's decor a five because even though we were in a literal aquarium, her decorations were super boring. There wasn't a single fish in her centerpieces. I just hate that the centerpieces don't have actual fish swimming in them. The whole place has actual fish swimming in it. Look, look around. You're in an aquarium. Also, why fish in the centerpieces? That's sadistic torture. She was one of those kids who definitely like took the magnifying glass and like burned the ants with them just for fun. Like, that, uh, so, what are they supposed to do with like 15 or 16 fish swimming around? The reveal of the winner was something that is completely just kind of glazed over on the show because nobody is really watching it even. When an episode ends, it's just like, oh, I didn't expect him to pop out of the limousine. Um, the, the groom is in a tinted window limousine and he drives up to all the brides that are waiting anxiously. I'm a little nervous. nervous. Yeah. I'm feeling really nervous. The feeling is severe anxiety. And they all are holding their little bouquets and waiting and then um, the groom steps out and everyone goes, oh! <laughs> And then immediately cuts to them all shit talking each other after like I didn't expect him to pop out of the limo. That's for sure. I didn't expect that. I think that Kathy's style wedding was more the other girl's style. I think mine was a little too extravagant for the normal human being. <laughs> and then they reveal where they're going. They, you know, open the envelope that's on the bouquet and it's like, oh, you're going to Fiji. Yay. Congratulations. Get set for the sweet life. You have won a luxury honeymoon to Sugar Bay on the beautiful Caribbean island of St. Thomas. Ah! Um, it's just, that's really it. The, the ends of every episode are so just, pfft, that it, it's just like, oh. It, it becomes obvious at that point that these, these women who were like, so drawn into the show. We're watching it because they love the drama and they love the cat fights and no shame in that. I mean, reality TV is some of the most popular outlets of media on television and no shame in that, it's addictive. Uh, there were some issues though with the honeymoon reveal. That being that the weddings weren't all like in the same month. The weddings of the brides all took place in different times of the year, sometimes even a year apart, and you couldn't reveal wh who won, obviously, until all the weddings were over with and attended. So typically, these brides would wait over a year to hear if they won the honeymoon. And it's not like they could go on their own personal honeymoon. In the clause of the show, it states that they can't go on a honeymoon until it's revealed who won the free honeymoon, which I don't even really know why, because if they're paying for it on their own and it has nothing to do with TLC, I don't understand why that's a rule, but apparently they couldn't even take their own honeymoon until they found out who won the free honeymoon. There was also some issues with the fine print. Now, they advertise these honeymoons as an all expenses paid, fully free, fully inclusive honeymoon, and that wasn't actually the case. Um, in fact, there wasn't even really a set budget for most brides, according to the brides on the show. Some of the brides got to go on some really nice all-inclusive all vacations and other brides um, were pretty much just set up with a hotel or at a resort and were told, okay, go crazy. 
one thing about it though is that taxes were not included. So airfare sometimes was included, means of travel sometimes was included, it wasn't always included, but taxes definitely weren't. And that, that stinks when you have to, you're like, oh, this is gonna be free, you're expecting a free honeymoon, and then you find out that you didn't even plan this vacation and you still have to pay the taxes on it. Regardless of when it was filmed or how much of it was real and how much of it was staged, um, it was my favorite show growing up. And I think that that says a lot about me. Yeah! I can't do that in dress. How she was able to do the moves that she did in that wedding dress. It was amazing. I think it says even more about the show because a, a seven to 13 year old, it was, it was their favorite show. And that really kind of says a lot about what kind of audience it held. And I know that it had a huge following of, of different age groups of women, but they were not watching it for, for the wedding content. We were watching it for the drama. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that little bell in the corner so you get notified every single time I post. I've got lots of fun content planned for you guys, lots of nerdy videos coming up, and I'm really excited to get into it. If you want to talk to me personally, I love taking channel suggestions, and I love connecting with what little audience I have. So if you're interested in that, you can follow me on TikTok and um, hang out at my Discord. I've got both of those linked on my home. Homepage. In the meantime, you've been watching Melody Ever After. Until next time.